This coming weekend on Saturday I'm going down to Doncaster with Mick and Bob and another couple of lads to the Model Engineering Exhibition. I missed last year because I was in Spain on holiday with a wife but I'm definitely going this year. Um, if you see me and you want to talk to us I shake your hand, just say, come and say hello John. Um, I'm not trying to be big headed or anything like that but often people, I can see people look at us and they kind of want to speak but they don't want to. I don't know why because I'm just a mechanic that pisses about. So if you want to speak to me, just come and speak to us. Simple as that. Before I cut the length of silver steel up into the various parts for the crankshaft, I'm going to ream these bearings. I would like to have mounted the, the whole base on the lathe saddle and line board them where I can mount it on the, the saddle of this particular lathe. So what I'm going to do is screw this onto these two bits of wood just to make it easier to work on because it, it rocks around. I'll take these bearings off, make sure it's all nice and clean, put it back together and I'll mark them, some little letter stamps so it all goes back the same way and then I've got a, a tool I can use to ream those out with. So the first thing is just to screw onto this temporary wooden base. I've got some nice bits of oak that I'll make a proper base out of once the engine is finished, but for a minute these pieces of fence posts will do the job. Right, that's better. It's nice and, nice and solid and I can work on it without it rocking and moving around. Just want to make sure all this corrosion is removed from here so the bearings are sitting nice. When these bearings are originally machined, they've been sold out together. You can see the remains of the, the solder on there. It's actually got a pretty protective layer of grease in there. All I need to do is remove all this corrosion from around here. Take the studs out so I can get everything cleaned up. These have all been basically individually handmade, so I'm going to keep them each one in each wheel just the way they've been made. There's a lot of stuff like this that was handmade, and when you get all that stuff in this, you actually had nuts and bolts that were handmade to go together. I know I've seen. Well, steam engines, full size ones, where every nut and bolt's been handmade, they've all been stamped, they've all got a letter on. We need our three eighths bit worth. Using some spanners here that I actually bought when I first started off when I was an apprentice. 
you know, that I thought I'd use these again. As I've started to clean this up, I've noticed there's a, a single punch mark there, a double punch mark there, and it's also amazing to see the way this has been hand finished, hand scraped in there. So it's got one, one, two, and one, two, three. So I'd expect to find corresponding marks on the on the bearings and on the bearing carry. Uh, uh, right, I've got it all sort of cleaned up. I hope you can see there's markings here. There's two zeros there, one there and three there, and there's corresponding markings on the bearing caps. The bearings are also marked. The bearings are a good fit in there. And this looks like it's actually been cut out with a hammer and chisel. Basically it's, it's quite rough, but the bearing is still a good fit in there. Now what I'm going to do is put some, probably araldite around here. Just so when that goes on, because the bearing won't be coming out again, just there is a little bit of little bit of movement there. This one's absolutely solid, and I think the stuff I scraped out of there was some sort of sealer to locate the bearings into the into the casting. So I'm just going to put it back on again, clamp them into there, and then that'll go nice and hard, and they'll be in there forever. I can hear people saying now. Uh, they didn't have other light when they, they built that. It'll have been some sort of white lead and someone else mixed up. But I can assure you, if they had this stuff, they would have used it. That, there's no doubt. Right, all I want is a little smear around there, and this will just take up the regularities where they've hand fitted it. Which is basically what I've just taken out with a wire brush. Anyway. Make sure that drops into there. I wipe the excess off, and once that goes hard, that's it. Let's open. Now clamp these together. Again, we've got the markings. Two zeros there, and that one goes like that. This is a, an adjustable reamer with a pilot, with a guide, that I'm going to use to ream out these bearings. I borrowed these off a guy I used to work for uh, lots of years ago when cars had spring shackle bushes and kingpins. These were used a lot to ream the bronze bushes out the size. Originally these had parallel blades in them, but as they've worn they've been replaced by fluted blades. Uh, they work quite well. This one goes from 15 16 up through to 1 and a 16th and I need inch so it's going to be just right for me. It's actually tapered 
you screw this nut that way, screw that that way and it makes the blades bigger. The pilot goes in there, so you ream the bush, then you turn it round, you do the other one, a little bit at a time until you get the sort of fit you want. So using these guides, the reamer has got to cut straight, it can't do anything else. I never I ever thought I'd be using these these reamers again. I remember having eight and arms when I was a, a young lad winding these to various kingpins and shackle bushes. Right, that is absolutely the dog's bollocks that. A nice tight running fit. No doubt about it, that'll, that'll run in quite nicely. So that's one really important job done. What I will do, I'll put some little pop marks on the bearings myself just to make sure that the bearings go back the same way, but obviously they will be. That's the, the finished job when they've been reamed. You see it's put quite a, a decent finish on. I put it back together and just make sure it goes back together and turns around okay. <coughs> no reason why it shouldn't. much better fit. <clears throat> it's actually locked up there or tight there. Once the bearings are clamped down it should go nice and free again.
Right. Perfect. Absolutely. The dog's bollocks out. Gripping but not too tight. That'll run in. Really nice. Good lad, come on. <laughs> Go on then. Shot will make sure you could. Once again, it's that time. I'd just like to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are still coming in towards my wife, Deb, and my dad. Seriously, thanks very much. Here it comes, completing the box, ready, bastard. John, man. You know, you're a bit of a belly in John when it comes to like your yeah, introduction. I make a start on a crankshaft and I do one very important job. I get the main borings. Main borings, you belly end. <laughs>